say she once had me. She showed me her room, isn't it good? That Norwegian room. She asked me to stay and she told me to sit anywhere. So I looked around and I noticed there wasn't a chair. How you doing? Justin here. Today we are checking out the fabulous Beatles song Norwegian Wood. Great fun one to play this one, a real kind of acoustic guitar classic and nowhere near as hard as it seems. Now a lot of people kind of go wrong with this tune by starting off with a tab. Now most tabs that you get are kind of done to be as accurate as possible but with a song like this really what you want is the bare bones of the tab and then once you can play that you'll find that you naturally start to add in all of those little extra bits because Really, if you tried to play it exactly like the recording at the beginning, you'd find it really difficult. And that's where I think a lot of tabs get kind of let down there. So in the, in the songbook there, I've written out kind of what I'd call the shell, which is kind of the main melody where you'd strum. And if you start with that and you learn to play that properly, nice and slow, because there is a few little tricky bits. So do it slow first, get it under your fingers, and then just by playing it, you'll find that it ends up a lot more like the record. So that's what we're going to be doing. So... First thing is capo second fret, right? Regular tuning, capo second fret. It's all kind of based around a D chord, so we're just going to be holding a D grip and then using our fingers to get this kind of... Going to be playing that melody. And actually, I keep the third finger down for pretty much that whole thing. So uh, easiest thing to do is, we're, as usual, we're going to kind of break it into two bits. We're going to be checking out the fretting hand first, then we'll have a look at the strumming hand. I'm going to go through the main riff first of all, and then we'll talk about the kind of the bridge or the middle section, whatever you want to call it, the chorus, uh, where it doesn't mention the chorus word, so we tend to call it the middle. Uh, that bit uh, I'll go through separately. Okay, let's get to that close up. So there we have the riff. Now you can see it is mostly based around this little D chord here. We're just going to be using our little finger mostly and lifting off certain fingers to be able to get this melody. The you can see there that those two fingers are staying most of the way through. Second finger just comes off for a little bit to move to a C chord. So we're starting off with the D. We play the bass note first of all, which is the open fourth string. Then we're going to strum the chord down, up, down, up. So one, two, and three, and four. Now this is plucking this note here with the first finger on the third string and hammering on the little finger in the fourth fret. Four, five, six. That's the count. So one, two, and three, and four, five, six. Again, the first bar. One, two and three and four five six down down up down up down hammer down down 
Remember, if it's in 6 8 this song, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, if it's on 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, it's going to take it down, people. We are going to go and have a look at a close up of that in a second. <laughs> Now, fourth finger's going down in the fourth fret of the fourth string. You don't need to put your first finger back. Some people tend to play it like it's still a D chord, but you can definitely hear that open G on the recording there. So after you've done the here, D with an F sharp bass, down, up, down. So you've got little finger down there, down, up, down, strumming the chord. Then second, uh, second fret, fourth string with the first finger, open G string, Back to the note F sharp there. So the whole first two bars. D. So just picking the bass note first of all, down and up strum, then open A, second finger comes off and goes to the third fret of the fifth string. We strum the rest of the chord there, which is a little kind of C add nine. Then first finger is playing the bass note B, and then we're to a D chord. And if you want to do it kind of properly, you want to hammer on those two fingers at the beginning. And then it's all just strumming. So one, two, and three, and four, and five, six. One, two, and three, four, five, six. One, two, and three. That strumming on that end part is, you know, I did it slightly different the first time around as to what's written the tab in the book. It really, it, it's changing a lot on the record. So that's kind of where you want to be starting off with here for that. It, it's pretty much what's on the record, but there's just a few extra strums. So let's go and have a look at the strumming hand now. Okay, remember this song is in 6-8. So it'll be 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 5 and 6. And with the down strums always on 1 and the up strokes on the and all the time. So we've got this. One, two, and three, and four, five, six. One, two, and three, four, five, six. One, two, and three, four, five, six. One, two, and three, and four, five, and six. And one, two, and three, and four, five, six. One, two, and three, four, five, six. One, two, and three, four, five, six. One, eight, and two, and four, five, and six, and. So it really is about keeping that hand kind of moving all the time once it gets a bit quicker. You can start to see now that there's some other upstrokes kind of ringing out here. So one, two, if I try and do it, there might be a little upstrum there after the three end, and definitely here. That all through that, there's little kind of upstrokes coming on. Which, if you're looking at a tab of exactly what was played by John on the original recording, that gets really confusing. But much better off just learning it straight. And then just allowing yourself to kind of sometimes get some extra strokes. just feel nice and easy. That's the big trick there. It's just keeping it flowing, smoothly strumming, you know. So as with any complicated riff that you ever learn, the best thing to do is to start really slowly and make sure that you get it right and solid and accurate first of all. So and this one's no exception. Such a recognizable riff 
really needs to be played well. And I often see guys that have kind of got the notes right, but they've focused too much on those and not enough time on the rhythm. So the rhythm's got a bit wonky. So make sure you practice it slowly. It's a good idea to be able to count along and make sure that you're doing it with a metronome, like really accurately, then gradually speed that up and it'll kind of, you'll, you should have it right then. So uh, the only other bit of the tune is the bit the, generally referred to as the bridge. It's kind of a chorus in its structure, but it uh, doesn't have the title of the song. So I think that's why people call it the bridge. It's very simple. Uh, it's just going from the D chord that we've got in all of the verses, it moves to a D minor chord. Now, uh, for D minor, you can either leave your third finger where it is and just swap around your first and second finger, so your first finger's on the first fret of the thinnest string and your second finger is where your first finger was for the D chord. Uh, I sometimes play it with my fourth finger on the second string note, but uh, it doesn't really make any difference which one you choose in this case. So uh, we're going to a D minor. She asked me to stay and she a second bar of D minor going to G. And then back to D minor for two bars before going to E minor and then to A. Back, back to the red. So there's not a whole lot going on there. Now, to talk about the strumming quickly, once we go to the D minor, there's two kind of patterns. At the first kind of uh, middle section, or bridge, whatever, uh, the strumming seems to be continuous strumming with the accents on beat one the and after two, beat four, and the and after six. So we have one, two, and three, and four, and five, and six, and one, and two, and three, and four, and five, and six, and, sorry, the and after five at the end. So one, and two, and three, and four, and five, and six, and one, and two, and three, and four, and five, and six, and down, up, down, up, down, up, down. It's just an interesting accent pattern. That's the pattern that's being played, but it sounds to me more like one, two, and three, and four, five, and six, and one, two, and three, and four, five, and six, and later in the song it's kind of reverting to that, which I think is kind of, seems to fit the song better to my ear. So, down, down, up, 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 one, two, and three, and four, five, and six, and one, two, and three, and four, five, and six, and... But it's kind of loose, right? There's not like, you have to do it that way for this, so you can experiment a little bit. The same with that kind of end strumming in the last bar of the riff. It's not really that set, which is again one of those reasons why trying to follow a tab too accurately can kind of lead you down the wrong path, because it's not exactly the whole truth. It's changing a little bit through the tune. So uh, especially this kind of older music, there were less, uh, was less copy and pasting going on in tracks. So it is more likely that each different bit's going to be slightly different. And I think that's a nice thing. So uh, again, D minor. D minor again, going to G. Sometimes I put a little hammer on to the B there, but you don't, it's not on the record, it just sounds nice. Back to D minor, then to E minor, and to A. And then we're back to the rim. And that's the tune, that's the whole thing. It's a really nice one to sing as well because it kind of fits with the chords really well because the little melody's being played on the guitar and you're singing it as well. It's kind of easier than a lot of other songs to, to sing and play. So uh, if you're into doing the singing and playing thing, this is a really good fun one. But make sure, if you're going to sing and play, that you get the guitar part really well sorted first because if you're still struggling and having to think about the guitar part, the singing's going to be real difficult. So master the guitar part first, once you've got that, then start to have a look at the uh, vocal thing. And just do it a section at a time. Do the verses and practice the first verse over and over again. Make sure you know where the words are sitting with the melody and uh, you'll have it in no time, I'm sure. Have yourselves a lovely one. Uh, I'll see you for another lesson or song very soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.